Bowser's Hour. And hello, everybody. Welcome once again to the Devil's Hour. My name is Jeff with the G, and for the next, I don't know, hour or so, I'll be showcasing the weird, the wild, and the wonderful, all for you. How are we doing? We doing good? Cheers, everybody. Ah, mm, 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 mm. Daddy's medicine tastes so good. Um, so yeah, um, to another late night Wednesdays. I think I might keep it up during the Devil's Hour here. I think unless I have something else going on. Just had some the last couple of Wednesdays, so it was on different days. Back to this. My work schedule works out where I can do it now, so I'm gonna do it now. We doing all right? Uh, other than my work stuff, doing great. Uh, I get to produce my first live show next month. Uh, so if you're in New York City, or if you plan on being in New York City, say the 21st, 22nd, this guy. Cool shows. Anyway. You know what time now, right? <laughs> Fox News. All right, so Jesse Duplantis, uh, right there. Uh, he's actually a super right wing, uh, right wing. Cheers, everybody. Super right wing evangelical preacher, like there's any other kind. Uh, so that we're not going to see Jesus return anytime soon. Why do you ask? Well, because he says that people haven't given enough money to his church. That's right. He uh, said this while all while bragging the fact that uh, he is a multimillionaire and has his own private jet. Because apparently Jesus don't black coach. Man, I'm in the wrong fucking business. But damn this conscious and non-faith-based morality. <laughs> That's low can laughter. Uh, R. Kelly, this asshole, uh, the noted R&B crooner and golden shower impresario, uh, has actually been found guilty on all charges, by federal charges no less, uh, for sex trafficking and racketeering. Now, over 45 witnesses, 45 witnesses came forward to talk about the depravity and the culture that he cultivated while he kept being all these different women that were in thrall, some of which that were underage at the time. Well, technically, they were of age in certain states, but not in all states. Take that for what it was. Uh, and you know who has come out to support this asshole? That asshole. Bill fucking Cosby. Uh, who actually was just released from prison on a fucking goddamn technicality. Uh, but both of these things tend to do this weird kind of peanut butter my chocolate sort of thing. So there's this fun meme. Things like, of course you can't read it, but I'm going to blow it up bigger just because... I think it's worthwhile knowing right there. I believe I can Spanish fly. I believe I can drug you tonight. And so on and so forth. Read it. Jello. I think it's hysterical. So there you go. The left one don't want to work. Anyways, as we get around from that, let's do like talk about things like that right there and say things like his palms are sweaty, knees weak, arms are heavy. There's a vomit on his sweater already. Mom spaghetti. Brand new restaurant opened up. Mom's spaghetti in Detroit, Michigan. Uh, and yes, Motherfucking Eminem is actually involved with this. What started as a weird throwaway line for the Oscar winning fucking tune is now a culinary destination in Detroit. I can give jokes about this, but I think it's pretty cool and brilliant, as is this. 
Get your sweaters ready, Detroit. Mom's Spaghetti is coming to 2131 Woodward Avenue. Want some road pasta after the game? Got that. Meatballs? You know we got that. What about the Sketty Sandwich? Mom's got that too. Get ready to get some Mom's Spaghetti, Detroit. Opening in the alley next to the Union Assembly this September. 313-888-8388. Mom's Spaghetti. It's all ready. Ready, 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 ready. That is a uh, real commercial that happens in New York, uh, in Detroit. Sorry, uh, if it was in New York, I'd fucking be eating it right now. You know what else is cool? Oh, I like that. So Nicki Minaj's tweet that pushed a crazy false claim about a cousin's friend's aunt's cousin's father's sister's aunt who experienced some kind of weird side effect from some vaccine. It, the story has gotten even weirder. Giant balls. Her cousin's friend. His testicles became swollen. I want to interview the balls. So here's the point that she's making. His testicles became swollen. Did you have a really good bachelor party? Nicki Minaj's cousin's friend's balls. He has swollen testicles. Orchitis is the term. COVID vaccines do not cause swollen testicles. Are you calling Nicki Minaj a liar? This stuff caused well. It was Pfizer. We offered a call with Nicki Minaj. I'll circle back on that one. Swollen testicles. Swollen genitals. Swelling to his genitals. I need you to follow me with this. If Nicki Minaj's cousin's friend is watching, or his former fiance is watching, we want to hear your story. Her cousin's friend. His testicles became swollen. I want to interview the balls. It's not complicated. His testicles became swollen. Did you have a really good bachelor party? Think about it, she said. Don't be bullied. Things blew up from there. He's the last part of Nicki Minaj's tweet that enrages them. You can't allow people to force you to take drugs that you don't want. And if you allow people to force you to take drugs you don't want, you're done. What happened to Nicki Minaj's cousin's friend's balls? And what was sad about this is that it wasted our time. It's Nicki Minaj's cousin's friends' testicles who are sworn to taking the facts. At least they've got Tucker Carlson to defend a black woman. Testicles make like that. Her cousin's friend. His testicles became swollen. I want to interview the balls. Testicles make like that. So here's the point that she's making. His testicles became swollen. Did you have a really good bachelor party? Testicles make like that. Let me get this straight. That person can't speak about questions with what they're having about something that they're going to have to put in their body. <laughs> What? Do y'all think that I would go on the internet and lie about being invited to the fucking White House? Oh my goodness. Guess what they're doing right now? If they assassinate me and make me look crazy or stupid, guess what? No one else will ever ask questions again. The Democratic Party jumping at the chance. Well, hmm, we can't make fun of the actual story anymore. Talk about testicles and balls till they drop dead. Her cousin's friend. His testicles became swollen. I want to interview the balls. It's not complicated. His testicles became swollen. Did you have a really good bachelor party? His testicles look like that. You're welcome, everybody. Uh, we got a great show tonight. We've got Pom 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 Squad. Cheers, everybody. Uh, the Sentimentalists and uh, Dead Sarah along with uh, some other weird, wacky, and wild stuff. So uh, stay tuned, and we will be right back. Glad to have uh, the Old Humble guy in the chat. Hey, Joe from Old Humble Distillery. Uh, great whiskey out of Texas. If you had a chance to pick some up, I highly recommend it. Supposedly it's here in New York, but I haven't found it yet. Anyway, uh, talk about it first, guess, shall we? I think we shall. Uh, so who I want to talk about? I want to talk about Pom Pom Squad. 
Uh, it's actually an indie rock uh, band from right here in Brooklyn, New York. Uh, initially starting as a solo project for lead singer Mia Barron. It has evolved into a raucous four-piece band. That's pretty cool. They actually just released a brand new record called Death of a Cheerleader. Yeah. And here's actually the lead single from that album by Pomp Pomp Squad called Naturally Head Cheerleader. Here you go. Pom 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 Squad, everybody! Great track, great album. Definitely check that out. A lot of fun. Um, yeah. 
So we're doing good so far? I hope so. Um, yeah. Ba, 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 ba. As you guys know, I uh, always like to showcase the weird, the wild, and the wonderful. That includes short films. And my big kick right now uh, for these people who just need more love uh, is this really great competition called the 48-Hour Film Festival, which if you guys aren't familiar with, is a group of filmmakers uh, would be part of a contest where they have to make a movie in 48 hours, and then the best one wins the local festival that then gets moved on to do stuff. And so I think it's really cool to showcase this sort of stuff because a lot of these people are budding filmmakers. So the more eyes that gets put on that sort of stuff, the better. And as such, there's this. that thing. It is April 29th, 2017, and I am at the former residence of Charlie Lavamore. The person of interest for the murder of Anthony Murphy back in 2007. Police left this case dormant for the past few years, leaving it open for amateur forensic novelists to poke around in. This is the third person of interest on the list, and so far has been about as helpful as the first two, due to the fact that he has passed away. So, Charlie, may I call you Charlie? In your original statement to police, you had said... What the fuck? Please, help me. Who is this? I need help. I'm hurt. And he's coming back soon. Where are you? I, I'm in a room. I can't tell. He drugged me. Do you know who drugged you? No. Oh. What's wrong? I can't. I can't feel my legs. Okay. Um. What's your name? It's, it's Anthony. Anthony who? Anthony Murphy. Uh... Would you please help me? Help, help me. Anthony, do you remember anything about being taken? Uh, maybe. Uh, there's a dirt road. Yellow, yellow house. And a palm tree. Thank you. 
Anthony, can you tell me about the room you're in? I don't know. I, I came... I came out of the bathroom and it's... The bedroom. I think... Yeah, I think so. With the sliding glass door? Yeah, but it's... I can't... I can't get it open. Oh, shit. Oh, oh God. What? Oh, he's, he's back. Anthony. He's inside. Can you hear where he is? I can hear him doing something in the house. He just turned on the sink. You're sure he's using the sink? I think he's washing his hands. That means his back is turned to you. Get out of that room and get across the hall now. I just heard the sink stop. I think he's coming this way. If he's in the back, get out the front. I can't make it to the front. What? I will find me for sure. Anthony, where are you? Two doors by the kitchen. Which one? It's a garage. The door... Uh, the door won't budge. He knows where I am. Hang on! Anthony, is there another pet door over in the corner by the washer and dryer? Yeah, I see it. Anthony! Hi, Boobdini here. Are you bored in the house and in the house bored? Well, we have the answer for you. It's the brand new burlesque deck. It will help you play with yourself while you're home alone. Solitaire has never been this sexy. Ooh, Miss Orchid May goes right on top of Simone Del Mar. Bored playing with yourself? Play with others. Zoom has never been this much fun. Two, three, war, war. Ooh, I have a scene oh. now just slightly by Simone Del Mar. Yay! Thank you, thank you. Not only do you get these 52 amazing playing cards, but we've included this, a cheat sheet of who the 26 performers are. Buy yourself a deck today. Cure the boredom at burlesquedeck.com. Kind of fun and creepy, right? Yeah. So uh, let's talk about our next guest, shall we? Let's talk about world-renowned celebrity mentalist Mysterion the Mind Reader as he teams with other mentalist Steffi K to creating a two-person mind-reading experience that is truly breathtaking. I'm talking about the sentimentalists. With her vintage looks, Steffi brings back that Style of classic mentalism, transporting your ba you back to that golden age of magic. Uh, Mysterion has also appeared on stages around the globe and has made hundreds of television and media, uh, media appearances. Dude, those guys were also on America's Got Talent a couple of years ago. And it was fucking amazing. Um, but what's really cool is these guys do a lot of fun. So together they make this really cool show where they're doing things with a touch of humor, but ultimately with a lot of class. So uh, here, check this out.
I'm Steffi K. And I'm Mysterion. And we're the Sentimentalists. Two minds. Working as one. And tonight, Canada, we're going to get into your minds, starting with The Judges. Now, you all have a favorite movie, or at least a movie you really enjoy, right? Steffi, what's your favorite movie? I have a lot of favorites, but uh, I really do love Some Like It Hot. Oh, I love that film. I love Star Wars. Do you? Yeah. Well, nobody asked. Oh, I guess you have a point. <laughs> so we're going to ask the judges to try something right now, and we're going to actually listen to what you're thinking. I know that sounds a little bit impossible, but you're going to change your voice when you say the name of the movie you're thinking of. Um, let me give you an example of how this works. So even though I already know, what's your name? Bettina. She's right. Yeah. Now, lie to us, Bettina. What is your name? Georgia. Oh, boy. She's a very good liar. <laughs> all right, this is going to be more problematic than we thought. All right, so we got my favorite movie, all sorts of different films. Take one of these cards out at random, look at the front, remember what movie it is, and on the back is a list of a whole bunch of different films, including the one you picked. We want you to read about four or five different movies, and of course, include the one you chose in with that list. Steffi's gonna put on nature's blindfold, her eyes are closed, my eyeglasses are off, and my eyes are closed as well. When you have a movie and you have it turned over, begin reading. Okay. Um, the Matrix, The Maltese Falcon, The Shawshank Redemption. Mm, you see, I, I, I heard Fargo. it right there. Yeah, me too. You're picking it up, what do yeah. you pick up? Shawshank Redemption. Yeah, that's yeah. exactly correct. Yeah. Now you changed your tone of voice on that, believe it or not. But yeah. there's only about 20 choices. Yeah. We want you to think of any movie. If it happens to be in here, that's just chance. Maybe you saw it. And you're going to print it down on this paper, a movie that everyone would know or recognize. I'm going to take off my blindfold, and I'm going to take off my glasses and put on my blindfold. Yeah. Although, now I am kind of blindfolded. I can't see. I won't uh, look. And when you have that... I want you to write down the name of that movie. Now, we can't tell what you're writing from how you're writing it. We can't tell with the pen strokes. However, we can tell when you're done, and you're done. You're done, all right, pass it over to me. And I want you to uh, look at it, all the judges. You know this film? Yeah. I'm yeah. take this, hide it away. And Steph, you open your eyes. Okay. So, thinking about the uh, movie that you I need you to focus on it, you know, concentrate. Uh, okay. Keep looking at hers. I have, have something in mind. Yes. Um, no, this is a fun movie, right? I'm kind of getting this like party kind of exciting atmosphere. Maybe school, yep. college, university, um, Alpha Beta Gamma, you know, like that yeah. kind of stuff, right? Yeah. Are you thinking of Animal House? Yes. <laughs> That's unbelievable. <laughs> That's unbelievable. You okay. want to know why? Do you want to know why? why? See Martin Short over there? Before we even started today's program, uh -huh. I took a Blu-ray copy of that film and I put it under your seat. Take a look and see. Is it there? Is it there? Now that would have been an awesome trick. <laughs> Guys, even though your thoughts are in your head, they're also projected into ours. I'm Mysterion. And I'm Steffi K. And we are the, the Sentimentalists. Sentimentalists. Thank you.
sentimentalists, everybody. Wasn't that a lot of fun? Uh, really great people. Uh, I hope to see them live at some point. Um, be a lot of fun. Uh, just so you guys are aware, also, uh, the uh, Something Strange Festival is happening on October 10th. And uh, the sentimentalists are part of that. It's happened in uh, Toronto, Ontario, Canada. So if you can make your way that way, totally fucking do so. Because it's got a great cast of a lot of people beyond just the sentimentalists. So it's definitely worthwhile to go check out. But until then, you know what time it is, right? That's right, it's time for a little sideshow history. Uh, so today, I want to talk about Stephen Bobrowski. Uh, Stephen Bobrowski, otherwise affectionately known as Lionel the Lion-Faced Man. Uh, Bobrowski was actually born in 1890 in Poland with actually one inch of hair covering his entire body. His mother blamed this condition uh, after, upon witnessing the mauling of his father by a lion while she was pregnant with Stefan. Uh, so she therefore thought he was uh, an abomination. Stefan, probably the father too, but at least Stefan. Uh, so she gave him up to a man named Sadelmeyer when he was only four years old. Sadelmeyer then gave him the stage name, which is Lion of the Lion Face Man, or at that time, Boy. And then actually began exhibiting him all over Europe. Now, by the time he actually officially got on to exhibit, uh, Lionel's face, uh, hair actually grew to be about eight inches on his face and about four inches everywhere else. I mean, really, his entire body was covered with hair, except for basically the palms of his hands and the soles of his feet. Now, about 1901... Uh, Lionel started traveling uh, places like the United States and appearing with the Barnum and Bailey Circus uh, and doing stuff. And he toured with the circus from then on, occasionally going back to Europe. Now, in his act, beyond looking really cool with you know conditioner, uh, he actually did like various gymnastic tricks and also spoke to people to show his gentle side. Is it showing that you know just because he looks like a you know a beast doesn't mean he is one? Um, so that's what he did. He actually eventually settled in the United States in 1920, where he actually became a very popular attraction and actually moved right here to New York City, where he actually became a fixture in Coney Island, which is, hey, that's where I live. Uh, so it's amazing. Uh, by the late 1920s, uh, he actually decided to retire from Sideshow and then moved back to Germany. Of which around 1932 he actually passed away and he was like 41 years old. Yeah. So Lionel the Lion Face Man, everybody. Pretty dope, right? Anyways, we'll be right back. Men die and fade into time, but legends like us live forever. We are immortal. Welcome to the Immortal Wrestling Federation. The IWF, everybody. That's uh, they're based out of Houston, Texas. In fact, they just performed at the uh, the Creepy Hollow Haunt, where they actually did an outdoor uh, an event for wrestling. So definitely check them out if you're in the Houston area. They also do stuff online, so it's still too dope and pretty cool. Um, yeah. So uh, as people are aware, that I've been doing this show for quite a while on another channel. So I'm showcase. I like to showcase some of those really cool people I liked when I was on the other channel, especially early on, and like get them some extra love. And uh, this is by no means an exception for this next group. Uh, I had the distinct pleasure of actually seeing them perform a few times. What they like to do is they like to fuse that old school soul sound with almost a rock like energy. And what I'm talking about is. Tomar and the FCs. Um, 
they uh they really deliver and i'm not kidding about this at all like whenever they pl- play live i'm fairly fairly certain people are getting pregnant just by being a part of the show just by watching the show uh just from the music uh so they're really really awesome i can't talk more enough about them how awesome they are so i'm just gonna let you see for yourself so it's tomar and the fc's and this is their single uh innocence that's true uh before i get back to this because we are doing this live old humble guy baby looked like tomar that's a very true statement uh, i've seen your baby and um, i would ask for a paternity test anyways here's innocence
Is your bar looking a little ordinary? Is it lacking something awesome? Well, head out to your local liquor store and, and pick, pick up, up something, something extraordinary. extraordinary. Grab a bottle of Old Umble Straight Whiskey or Old Umble Special Reserve. They're clean, smooth, easy drinking whiskeys that taste the way whiskey should taste. From humble beginnings to an extraordinary finish, Old Umble Whiskeys are what your bar needs today. Walk tall, be awesome, and, and drink humble. Old Umble Straight Whiskey and Old Umble special reserve. Get, Get yours, yours today. today. Tomorrow in the FCs, everybody. Cheers. Yeah. Uh, so let's talk about our next guest, shall we? Uh, since uh, 2005. So when this group gets started, Dead Sarah has been tearing up the alt rock, rock scene in uh, Los Angeles. Uh, this LA based trio, a trio is actually named after a misheard Fleetwood Mac lyric. Uh, they grew up actually in the shadow of Scientology, believe it or not, but doesn't let that get them down. No, man. They don't get, like, get that them down. They actually just released a brand new record called Ain't It Tragic. Now, actually, really cool record. I really dig it a lot. Um, I really like the vibe of this band. And you can definitely hear it on their most recent single, which is called Heroes. Dead, Dead Sarah, everybody. everybody dope right man dead sarah well my amazing a lot of fun um should have a good time i had a good time um so yeah why don't we get some big thanks right there big thanks who should we give the thanks for the show well of course we need to thank pom pom squad who you can follow on instagram at pom 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 pom, pom squad Blah, i can talk i really can so at Pom Pom Squad on Instagram or go to pompomsquad.bandcamp.com to pick up Death of a Cheerleader. You know who else you can thank? Let's thank the Sentimentalists. Uh, follow them on Instagram at Sentimentalists and then go to thesentimentalistmagic.com to get all their cool deets and details. Um, and then if you're in the uh, Toronto area and do beginning of next month, go check out Something Strange. It's going to be amazing. And then finally, of course, we also need to thank Dead Sarah, which you can follow on Instagram at Dead Sarah, and then go to DeadSarah.com to track down all their cool shit. Yeah. Uh, we should also thank uh, our retro thanks, which was Tomar and the FCs. So follow them at Tomar and the FCs, and then go to SpliceRecordsTX.com to pick up their records. Uh, they're Great label out of, based out of Houston, Texas, which is Splice Records. Uh, I'm a big fan of those friends and stuff like that. Uh, they just had a big festival this past weekend, which I uh, it pained me not to be able to get to. Uh, but who knows? Maybe sometime in the future. Anyways, um, thank you guys so much for tuning in. I greatly, greatly appreciate it. It's amazing. And then if you're in the New York area, keep track to my social medias, like right there at devils.hour um, on the Instas, because I'll be doing a live version of this show next month on the 21st. It's going to be dope. I've got a really great lineup of cast, including an amazing burlesque artist uh, by the name of Desiree Desaad, uh, who's also a phenomenal like fx makeup artist and uh photographer i've got uh cyclone jack sullivan who i had showed a video of him last week uh who's gonna be part of the show a good friend of mine and then uh all the way from new orleans uh 
the singing sideshow burlesque uh, uh, amazing performer by the name of Betsy Propane. It's gonna be a lit fucking show. So if you're in the New York area on that last weekend before the Halloween's, come check it out. It's gonna be cool. It's gonna be a cool little museum for me in a museum. It's gonna be amazing. So, anyways, thank you guys for tuning in. Be safe, be cool, be groovy, and as always, keep drinking, everybody.